Have a look at the wheels when they kick too. Hey. <laughs> 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 Good to see you. It's been such a long time, mate. All right, Zach, eh? I know how competitive you are. Actually, I know how competitive you are. I remember the first time we probably met, like when you were a kid, you were riding in Brisbane, and straight away I kind of thought, this kid's gonna make it because you thrived on that. Um, you know, like, if you're, you're wanting to beat everyone, you know what I mean? You're angry young man back then. Not like but, to change. No, no, but, but all I remember is, like, you thrived on competition. I've never been scared of competition, even now. Like, no. I'd rather be on the favourite in a big group one race than be yeah. on some, because I, I want that. That's what I live for, so. Yeah. So I must have had that as a young age, but I was always very good at sport. Everything I played, I was good at, so I yeah. had the confidence right from the start. Back in those days, in Brisbane days, I used to have John Power sitting next to me. Yeah. And every week he'd say, you've got to go to Sydney, you've got to go to Sydney, you've yeah, got to yeah. go to Sydney. And he drove me mad for a couple of years until I finally listened to him. A couple of years in Sydney and then I went to Hong Kong. Yeah, you always go in there. Yeah. I was there the first year, remember? Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we both arrived at the same day. We both arrived at the same, same time. I had the, yeah. I had the um, year I had the year contract near the six months, Yeah. I remember. And then you were going to get the extension. But I remember you were struggling. Yeah. And you were, you were thinking about going. Yeah. And I said, please don't go, Zach. Please, you're too good. And it's one of them places you've got to grind, grind, grind. I said, just give it, even if you give it one more year and you say, okay, I've had enough. Yeah. Um, so my first big opportunity actually come off the back of you. You had a falling out with Ricky Yu. That's right. Towards the end of the first season. That's correct. And Ricky come to me and said, you know, would you like to ride for me? And I'm thinking, well, I've got no one else to ride for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, of course, I did. And then I rode 10 winners for him the last month of that season. Yeah. And if you ride 10 winners in a month in Hong Kong, you're flying. You're absolutely airborne. Because yeah. we only race for 10 months of the year, so 10 times 10 is 100, right? That's right. There's only been three jockeys in Hong Kong history to ride more than 100 winners in a season. Yeah. So that illustrates how well I finished that season off, and then yeah. obviously gave me the confidence to come back the next season. Yeah. And although I didn't fly at the start of next season, I was getting more opportunities. And by the time I got th halfway through the second season, that's when things started to pick up. I'll tell you one story which haunts me still to this day. I was booked to ride Winks. Yes. She won at the Sunshine yeah, Coast. Yeah, that's right. And then she was having her first up run here uh, in Sydney. And I was booked to ride her and some other rides for Chris Weller on the day. Yeah. And uh, the week before, I had a horse kick me at the barrier trials in Sha Tin yeah. and it broke my ankle. I couldn't ride her. She won and four other horses did on the day. So I missed five winners. Unbelievable. I wouldn't have stayed on her, of course, but it would have been good to add a chapter in my book. Would have been nice. To be able to say I rode her. Oh yeah, Zach, eh? What are we playing for? Mate, I know how, hey? I know how uh, competitive you are. So. How much you want to play for? Whatever makes you feel uncomfortable. We'll play for you. Play for your three Melbourne Cups. Good as gold. <laughs> First to ten. First to ten. Have you got anything that can match that though? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> right. I got right a couple of international trophies. Oh, that's it. That's that's one. We're talking about competition again, and you and Dougie. Douglas mm. White had this thing going on, and you were chasing, you were hunting him down, hunting him down. You know, he, he, he could see I was coming for him. Yeah, you know, but you, there was always that little niggle with you all the way through. Yeah. Like healthy competition, obviously, but mm. there was always this thing that I'm coming to get you, I'm coming to get you in it, and, well, yeah, and you stopped. The season running. before, because everyone said Douglas White would never get beaten, right? Mm. And the season before, I, I had him on the ropes. Yeah. And we had about a month to go, and then I got a kidney stone. Okay. And when I went in to have the operation to remove it, didn't go well, and I ended up getting gangrene. And I got really sick. Yeah. Um, and then I couldn't complete. I, I'm not complete. I, I missed, I think, two or three weeks of the season. Yeah. So Douglas then got away and won. Yeah. And he came out and he said, oh, I love competition, you know, bring it on, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, well, that's not fair. Yeah. I was on the sidelines. Yeah. You yeah. were getting a free kick. Yeah. So I, uh, I publicly come out and I said, all right. I said, I'd make it my mission next season to take you down. I said, I'm, yeah. I'm coming for you. Yeah, yeah. It's as simple as that. So I worked really hard in the off season, it physi should, it physically and mentally. He shouldn't have poked the bear. That's what he did. You know he lit mean? a fire in me. Yeah, and I just, I just, that was it. I just, I just, every day I used to go to sleep and wake up thinking about beating him in the premiership. And I yeah. just, I drove myself that mad. And I was that focused to do it. Yeah. But I come back the next season and after the first month, I had him on the ropes. At that time, I rode the fastest 50 winners in Hong Kong history. So I'd come out flying. And he was, he was just gone. I took the wind out of his sails. So then I used to get behind the gates and say, oh, are you still here? Are they still giving you rides? Yeah, yeah. All, those, all those types Cheeky of things. And I, and I just did his head in. Yeah. And I could see I was doing it. And he, he couldn't talk back to me. He was, he'd just look at me with a blank look in his face and he knew I had him. So, well, and and from this. that day on, he, he was gone. Yeah. There's nothing left for me to do in Hong Kong. I've, I've, I've sort of done it all, except chase the all-time record. Yeah. Douglas White's all-time record of 1,816. Yeah. If I chase Douglas's record, then that will be the absolute, the day I break yeah. it, yeah. I'll be done. 
So that'll be as far as I, I go if, if I feel like I want to go that far. Oh well, yeah, Jack, I've got three more to go, mate. You're trailing. Oh, my cups look pretty safe at this moment, so we've got we'll eight. Coming for you, though. Go on, eight. Well, yeah, I, 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 <laughs> didn't, I didn't expect anything less. So eight, eight, nine, nine. Oh. I don't know if I can come back from here. <sighs> ten, go, baby. Come on. Give me ten. Give me ten. Give me ten. Give me ten. Here we go. Oh. Ten. Well done. Ten. He's home. <laughs> my, cu keep the my, cups. my cups are safe <laughs> for another year. Uh, I'll never get my hands on one of those. Oh, you will. <laughs> You've had some many highlights in, in Hong Kong, and obviously winning premierships and beating Douglas and all those great things. What was the greatest moment that you've had in it's, Hong it's Kong? It's really hard to pick one, right? But yeah. if, if I sort of had to pick a, a few. Um, the, each of the premierships yep. have been special. Like yep. That's a pinnacle, right? That's, that's why I went there to try and win the premiership, and, and I was able to do that. So they've all been special. Um, winning the derby was great. Yep. I think the best... Uh, win I think I've had over there was when Beauty Generation won the International Mile yeah. in 2018 I think it was. He beat a world class field by four and a half lengths, eased down, yeah. he just smashed them. Uh, it was a phenomenal performance and that performance alone is one that stands out amongst all the others. Do you ever have that feeling that, that oh, if I stayed I'll, you know, I'll miss that? I don't. No. The only thing I wish I could have won or had won that I haven't is the Melbourne Cup. Yeah. Um, but I sacrificed that to a certain extent to, to be in Hong Kong. And it's very hard to pick up the right horse to be able to win that race. And it's, you know, it's a once a year thing. But I, I feel like I made the right decision to go to Hong Kong. Yep. I feel like I made the right decision to stay there. Uh, financially, it set myself and my family up for, for the rest of our lives. So I think that aspect of it, of it is, has been important as well. But to be able to achieve what I have been able to achieve, not just in Hong Kong, but around the world. And, and Hong Kong has given me that opportunity. But when people remember me, are they going to remember me for what I've done in Australia? Probably not, even though I've won Caulfield Cup, yeah. been placed in the Melbourne Cup and gold, Golden Slippers and won Doncasters and, and all that sort of stuff. One at Royal Ascot, one, at, one in Japan, one in Singapore, you know, the, the list goes on. Anywhere you've gone, you've hit the target every time. To be at that level for so long, um, to do what you've done with the injuries that you've had to go through and the pain and all the other stuff, that's only world class. It's as it's, it's simple as that, yeah. you know, so I take my hat off to you, mate. It's amazing. Thank you. Thanks for spending some time with me. No I know you're in Sydney to have a bit of a ride. And anyway, here's cheers to you, my friend. Cheers. <laughs>